What's the latest out there, Jay? Firefighters have been working on this for about an hour now, and we understand that one person has been hurt. Many of them behind windows that have been boarded up and taped up. They are praying that it won't get much worse than this. County leaders say that that's just a traffic nightmare that could become reality unless they start working on this problem now. Witnesses who were here the night of the accident say they remember hearing a loud snapping sound right before all of the logs came tumbling down. They say that the cell phones could cause a spark, which could lead to a dangerous accident. Well, here's what we actually found out. The chances of that happening are pretty slim. You see, in 1945, when they opened the place, it's not like they had a problem with women. It's just that there was a bar fight, a big one, almost destroyed the place. Two guys fighting over a woman. Even a 10-year-old could tell you cheating is serious. Yes, it is. Very serious. A mistake that comes with consequences. You get sent to the principal's office. You have like this very, very long talk with her. But the state's education agency accuses Stephanie's school district of cheating, manipulating numbers so that some schools will get higher ratings from the state. What was wrong with the water? Um, I was like we contaminated and there's a sewage spell in it and made me sick. I got sick. And I got sick. Even her husband got sick. You don't think about something like this happening. Until it happened, leaving Nina Mannix and the rest of her family fighting for the bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. You can see now he's doing, he's doing real great. He's going to be a football player. Four-month-old Jermaine Lofton Jr. now lives under the protective eyes of his grandparents. They think he might be a little slower than other children that's his age. So, I don't know. But the baby is in remarkable shape, considering what happened almost two months ago. Police say Jermaine Lofton started arguing with his wife. They say he stopped his car, took his own baby by the neck, and ran down the street. An off-duty cop, several witnesses, saw it happen. Grab the baby by the throat and hold it up in the air, and then he'd sling it back, and he'd, then he'd grab it by the arm, and he'd throw it up like he's getting ready to smash it. And then, with full strength, witnesses say he spiked the baby against this sidewalk. He got hit on this side of his head, but the right side, it affected all the nervous system on his right side, and he's like, he can't barely see out this eye. He can. Uh, barely he had his ear, he can barely move his arm, he's weak in it. The whole right side is weak. Katherine Johnson says she's still not sure why her son-in-law would do it. He should be punished severely because that was a two-month-old baby. <laughs> Relative say Germain will require extensive therapy for years to come. They say the fact that he held on to make it this far is nothing short of a miracle. I think he's going to be just perfect. Thanks to Austin's watering restrictions, this homeowner has coined a brand new phrase, water hangover. She's been getting one every five days. When it's your night to water, you get up at 12 and you turn on that timer and your sprinkler, and then a couple hours later, you're going to have to move the sprinkler. So this really means that you get up every one and a half to two hours throughout that night. That next morning, you are just not very effective in the workplace. The city started the mandatory restrictions two months ago. In a fast-growing town, the water treatment system's capacity couldn't keep up with demand. But now... Even if it stays hot for the next couple of weeks, which it, it generally does, we think water use is going to be low anyway, and you know we have the cool nights, so people don't need to order as much. He says the restrictions help save the city 10 to 15 million gallons a day. And in neighborhoods all over Austin, city leaders say that the water restrictions have had another positive effect. They say that people are starting to realize that watering every five days actually works better. You know, I do think that my yard looks better because I've watered it regularly, but staying up all night is no fun, and I'll be real happy when that's over. And it could be over this week, giving homeowners weary of watering schedules a reason to rejoice. Well, we'll all have to go out and turn on our water all at once and celebrate. 
Well, uh, don't go doing anything rash with the garden hose just yet. Remember, this is not yet official. City uh, planners, city managers are planning to get together again on uh, either tomorrow or Tuesday. They'll make their decision, and then they'll make their announcement. We'll let you know what happens. Live on the north side, Jay Carter, KVU 24 News. For the second time around, Lisa Thompson is walking through life alongside her mother. Had she had been a, a mean mother, I probably wouldn't be doing this. But she's always been so sweet, and she's always been there for me. Now we've got a couple more steps here, and the least I can do is be here for her. She moved in with me about two years ago. Hamburgers and french fries, right? While Thompson works, her 81-year-old mother spends time in a day program for the elderly. You won that in bingo? The evenings back at home are a disciplined routine. Dinner is served around 6. She's very finicky, and she won't eat much, so whatever she likes, we make it, right? And the roles of mother and daughter now seem somehow reversed. That's my youngest daughter. That's my last children. <laughs> Her baby girl. <laughs> because Thompson's mother now lives with Alzheimer's. But I don't mind hearing that anymore. It used to bother me when she used to say that. <laughs> now I'm, I'm just glad that she remembers that. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know that will change. Yeah. We have a fortune. A rigid schedule of routines. Mm -hmm. Mom likes Vanna. Means Thompson must often put her own life, person? her own interests aside. The only alternative, she says, is unacceptable. Have you ever been to a home? The issue of an old home, or an old folks home, that's gone. Within the next 10 years, Karen Langley predicts baby boomers will demand changes in the way we treat our elderly. That means that we need to develop more community-based services, okay. uh, more in-home care supports, more day programs, more senior centers. That's what I think about. If it was me, what would I want for myself? Would so, I want to go to a home or would I want to live you know, my life? you know, with someone I care about, someone I love as long as I can, rather than to go to a place where everyone's a total stranger and nobody loves you. That conviction could still change if her mother's condition becomes unmanageable. But for now, mother and daughter both say they're managing just fine. Isn't this beautiful? Jay Carter, KVU 24 News. It's not a grunt. And it's not an oink oink like everybody says, but it's a low toned squeal. And this woke me up at 3 30 this morning. A sleepless night for Bertha Wilcox. I'm untying this so the <laughs> so they can't open the the gate. The hogs that is. Last week, in the dark of night, a pack of feral hogs grazed the grass, maimed the mums. And I saw all of this and I just went into shock. The hogs hit seven other yards in Cedar Park within the last couple of weeks. So Animal Control put up a few pig traps and hit pay dirt. So once the pigs were in a poke... Well, they brought the pig rat for me to identify. <laughs> and I did, because I saw them through my binoculars. You made a positive ID. I made a positive ID. <laughs> oh, God. City workers think there's still two dozen more hogs to catch. Neighbors like Bertha Wilcox hopes that happens fast. Oh, absolutely. I've got to get some rest. <laughs> Jay Carter, KVU 24 News.